everybody, this is Sean V. Bradley, CEO of Dealer Synergy, AutomotiveInternetSales.com creator, and chief moderator of Internet Sales Twin Group. I feel like the man is still with all these, you know, names, Master Disaster, the Italian Stallion, all that stuff. Now, this is just Sean B. Bradley and... Um, Mark Stant II. <laughs> Sorry, I was just making a little fun of this stuff. Here's what we're going to do. This is going to be totally different. Never done this before. You know, um, I want to interview Mark as the BDC director of the Neil Huffman Group and just uh, live, we're live, you know, uh, ask questions and answers, all the stuff. Like, let's just go through this. What questions do you have? You've been with me for two days. We went through a tremendous amount of training in different formats with different staff at Dealer Synergy, but what questions do you have going back into the dealership? Let's start. Uh, let's see. How do I get your energy for, for one? Um, Stop. Answer. Lots and lots of Rockstar energy drinks. I prefer the white cans. They're sugar-free, zero calories. So there you go. Okay. Invest in well, a look, case. See, I've got, I've, got, I've got the answer now. Um, so thinking about you know, questions I might have is you know, uh, how to get... Um... Damn it. HR questions or do you, uh, you want to talk about... Let's just, I'll give you categories so it's not too broad. Do you want to start with your, your staff? Do you want to start with your role? Do you want to start with the process? What, what do you think would be a good place to start for this? You know, Staff-wise, I guess uh, you know, what's, uh, what's a good way of not being overly... Um, Managerial, not being overly into their business and giving them a little bit of space as well. Okay, training. Okay, that's what I would do is in the training. But what I would do is really set expectations. You have what six appointment setters? I've got six right now. Another two that should be coming on. And okay, so you're going to have eight appointment setters. That's almost the entire showroom floor. The average dealership has ten salespeople. You're going to have eight phone salespeople. Correct. Correct. So what you want to do first is set proper expectations. Clearly identify what the job roles and job expectations are for your coordinators. In the dealer synergy system, you need to always articulate, listen, you have two job roles. I'm going to pretend I'm you and I'm talking to my team of appointment setters. Uh, your primary objective as an in internet sales coordinator or BDC rep is to make phone calls. Make and take phone calls. And obviously your number one protocol is try to secure an appointment. So again, they always have to know, almost like you're putting blinders on them, not really, but metaphorically put blinders on them. You want to stay laser targeted focus. You're not worried about pricing, availability, chasing steps, any of that stuff, product presentation. Your job is to pound the phones. Pound the phones, make phone calls. You're only going to have an 11 to 14% connection ratio on the phones. So the majority of what your job is follow up, follow up, follow up, phone call, phone call, phone call, voicemail, 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 voicemail. So, you know, that's what you need to prep your people with. Set up the expectations like, look, this is not going to be an instant gratification job. The majority of what you do is going to result in a non-opportunity or non-deal. Make them feel clear what's going on. Second thing I would focus on is that, okay, your first objective is to secure an appointment. However, what is your secondary? There's only two objectives. One is to secure an appointment. If you cannot secure an appointment, your secondary objective is to fully qualify that prospect and set up for a proper TO. I'm going to repeat that. See, if you cannot, if you understand, oh my gosh, I can't close this appointment because they're difficult, they're this, they're that, they change their mind, okay, then what you're supposed to do is go into protocol two. If you cannot secure an appointment, you are to fully qualify as much as you can, get information on the trade, down payment, monthly payment, whatever, as much as you can, and set up for a quality TO. So I think to answer your question, how do you not over-manage them, micromanage them, stress them out, stress yourself out, is by setting proper expectations, setting boundaries. I'm here to be you know, your friend, your support mechanism, but I am also your boss. Here's what I expect. And here's the other thing I would say to you, don't ever allow them to test the boundaries. Now I'm speaking not as Sean V. Bradley, internet you know, rock star, I'm talking to you as a dad. You know, I have three kids. You cannot turn around and say, okay, here's the line of demarcation. If you cross it, and then they go, <laughs> I just, you can't see that, but I put my foot out, I think. So you, you've got to be able to set expectations and give consequences, not just negative consequences, bad stuff, punishes, but good stuff. If you do this, you could expect this positively. If you do that, you can expect this negatively. So I believe the best way to answer your question is just by setting proper expectations um, you know, of, of what their job is and what you expect of them. Would okay. you agree? Yeah, that, that sounds like a good way to overcome that for me. Okay, so we talked about the people. We talked about the process. Okay. Um, you know, we could talk about uh, the actual phone calls, the leads, anything related to the Internet. Okay. Uh, so, you know, managing leads and, and uh, you know, how, uh, how many times uh, trying to contact someone's enough's enough. Um. Let's start there. That's, that's a good one. All right, Joe is going to be, is your digital marketing person. So Correct. So you, you said to me that you're going to have about 1,000 leads additional. 
additional on top of what we have now. So you're gonna have eight. You're gonna have you have two stores, four franchises, eight appointment setters plus yourself. So you're gonna have a, a heck of a lot of leads. Well, let's just go through the actual drill down. Each one of your appointment setters should be making 120 phone calls, make or take per day. Now, out of that, let's go through the conversions. They should, you know, connect with about, you know, like I said, 11 to 14 percent, which is roughly about 14 to 17 people. Out of the 14 to 17 people each, they should be uh, converting about 25 to 33 percent into appointments, which means each one of your eight appointment setters should be making approximately four to six. Let's just call it five appointments a day. So now for you, what does that mean? Eight times five is 40. You should basically have an understanding that your department should make 40 appointments a day. 40 appointments a day. That's a lot of appointments, my friend. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. So now, once you understand that, let's talk about the, the, the frequency of calls. As per the deal synergy process, you're supposed to email and phone call every single day for the first 31 days. We're not going to worry about on camera, it's all private stuff, what do you do from day 32 to day 90. But for here, it's very simple. Day 1 through 31, it's email and phone call every single day. You have Dealer Peak, correct? Correct. That's so, our CRM. So your Dealer Peak CRM system is going to be you know, programmed with action plans, protocols, you know, and email templates day one through day 31. So your computer, a lead comes in. Let's just say the lead is L.A. Williams, look it on a cord. L.A. comes in, the, the, the Dealer Peak CRM is going to send out email template one. You're gonna, your rep's going to phone call. Uh, the next day, if there's no response or have you, your, your uh, CRM dealer peak is going to send out day two, and then so on and so forth. Day two, email two. Day three, email three. Day four, email four, and so on and so forth. Make sense? Yes. Now, what your reps are going to be conditioned to do is to make a phone call every single day for the first 31 days. Now, does that mean that's all you should do? Absolutely not. Then this is really important. What you want to be able to do is be very cognizant and train your people to be cognizant about the time frames. 6 to 8 p.m. is the prime time to connect on the phones. So you don't want to keep calling L.A. Williams, you know, between 9 to 5, 9 to 5, 9 to 5, not even 9, 30, uh, you know, 5.30, 5.45. I'm talking about you want to flip before five o'clock and after six o'clock. Those are the two different time frames in my mind is, you know, before five o'clock, and then after six o'clock. Does that make sense? Yes. So we want to, you want to be cognizant. When you look at the Dealer Peak CRM tool and you look at, at the history for the prospects, you could see the timestamps, timestamps, timestamps. Just be very vigilant and cognizant of you know, when are your people attempting. Make sense? Correct. Okay, so the frequency in the phone calls, we're talking about also the time, times when they're phone calling, but don't just leave it to phone calls. You know, and don't just leave it to emails. You know, there's things that you can do. A couple tips that we didn't go over in training that are just going to be awesome for you is, let's just say, during, um, you know, let's say within the first 31 days, your email, phone call, and your email, phone call, and there's other things you could sprinkle in. For example, certain CRM tools allow you to text message. Well, and let's just turn on and say that you have someone's cell phone. Correct. If you can't get a hold of them or your reps can't get a hold of them through email, phone call, email, phone call, uh, Blitzkrieg, then start sending them a couple text messages. Okay. You know, certain CRMs are integrated with social media. Even if yours isn't integrated social media, if you have an email address from that prospect, right, you could cut that and drop it into LinkedIn. You could drop it into, you know, Facebook. You could drop it into Google. And chances are, if, they're, if they exist, exist in any other social media or they, their, their profiles exist anywhere out there, you might be able to find them on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, and you could social media engage them. And where do people access their social media? Over 50% of Facebook users access their Facebook through uh, their mobile devices. Correct. So again, let me recap. What you want to be able to do is not only just have a methodical blitzkrieg of a phone protocol inbound outbound, you want to utilize and implement text messaging into your strategy. You want to implement and utilize social media into your strategy. And here's something else. Let's just get into it. Let's just say, and that's just to instigate a communication. Let's say you have engage the prospect and they say something like, oh, I'm sick, or oh no, you know, we had a, a death in the family. Oh, you know, oh, we have an anniversary. Oh, it's my son's birthday, my daughter's, you know, birthday. It's a confirmation. There's times right or wrong through, you've been in sales for a little bit, that you, you find out things about that person on a personal basis. Would you, is that correct? That's absolutely correct. Then take advantage of it. If somebody turns around and says anything like that, you could send them a free e-card. You yeah. could turn on and send them some flowers. You could send them, you know, some things are free. Some things cost just a little bit of money. But invest your emotional bank account into, you know, showing these people that, you know, that you're sincere, that you care about them. It's called relationship selling. Does that help? That, that does definitely help. Okay. What other questions can I answer for you? 
Um, you know, off the top of my head, I'm not, I'm not thinking okay. of anything. Right what about, what about this? How do you feel about, you know, what do you think? Let's play the game. You know, what I mean, you're, you're a new internet, you know, slash BDC director. You're going to have a team of uh, appointment phone setters, right? Mm -hmm. And some of them don't know anything about automotive. All of them don't know anything. About all of them don't know anything about automotive, but th that's okay because they're profiled and they're going to be great phone experts, right? Correct. So, what do you think they're going to say when they take anything? Phone calls? Yeah. Well, I mean. Uh, you know, I've been working with them on getting them trained on the actual product, uh, and, and you know, we really just got to go more over the scripts. I got it. Let's talk about this. Time check. What time is it? Don't stop. What time is it? Okay, good. So we're going to do one more minute, okay? I, I've got an idea that we're going to close this section out. The training for them, that's what you should be asking me. Okay. All right, here's the things that you can do for your new people. And then this video is for them too, by the way. Okay. You know I, mean? I want them to see this. Okay, for your new people, you should go into, and you should obviously, the number one thing you should do is they should master dealer peak. You need to turn around and get them, you know, I don't know if they have web training, they've got video training, YouTube dealer peak and see what shows up. Call dealer peak, make sure your staff are completely experts on dealer peak. That's the number one tool that they have. Correct. They should be trained on your dealership website. To them, you got to be able to know how to use that dealership website like a PowerPoint presentation. They need to know all about the OEM websites. They need to know all about the lead source providers that you're on, Cars Direct, Auto by Tell, Audio SA, Delix. They need to know all that. On top of that, they need to know about Edmunds.com. They need to know about NADA guys, about Kelly Blue Book. They need to know about car and driver, car, re you know, um, you know, car review sites. They need to know where all your, your positive online reputation is. Are you on Business Radar? Are you on Dealer Radar? Are you on Google Reviews? They should know what people are saying that it's awesome and powerful so they could be able to regurgitate, reiterate that, or email that to all their prospects. It's true. Okay, they need to know, and you are the ultimate car guy. I mean, do you, I, this is the same video, but do you remember all that amazing stuff that he had said before uh, as far as all the specs, codes, options? That's great. They should get product knowledge certified, but what they need to know more than anything else is why people should buy a car for them. What is your value package proposition? What is different and better about your organization than anybody else's? That's a lot of stuff. You, any other questions? You want to stop there? No, I am totally good with that. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. This is Sean B. Bradley and Mark Stanton.